Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Assassin's Creed Mirage. I've spent the last week or so hunting for easter eggs in this game and I've found a fair few. And today, we're going to be taking a look at all the easter eggs in Assassin's Creed Mirage. This might just be the cutest easter egg I've ever found in a game. And to find it, all you need to do is keep an eye out for cats as you're exploring Baghdad in Assassin's Creed Mirage. There's a few different breeds of cat that you'll come across, but the markings on one of these breeds literally has the Assassin's logo on its face. Just give it a little Assassin's hood and you've got the most adorable hidden one in all of Baghdad. Now, what I didn't realise until recently is that this Katassin is actually referencing a fan's cat. Over on Facebook, a user by the name Alana Sass posted, Please add this cat whose face has the Assassin's Creed logo on his precious snout to the game. He belonged to my friend and he recently crossed the Rainbow Bridge. I will happily pay with coffee and Timbits to any team member willing to pull overtime to put him in there. And while it's not officially confirmed that this is indeed a reference to this post, I think it's pretty safe to say that this Katassin has a real world counterpart. A small easter egg that you might have missed in Assassin's Creed Mirage comes courtesy of the Treasure Hunter outfit. <laughs> Unlocked by collecting all the artifacts for Derwish, the outfit is described as the garb of someone who hunts the desert for treasure. Its appearance has a striking similarity to Indiana Jones' outfit as seen in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I think that description pretty much confirms this as being an Indiana Jones easter egg. I'm sure this easter egg coming up will be a favourite for fans of Assassin's Creed Valhalla as a character that you'll probably recognise makes an appearance. The tale of Baghdad at this location in the city sees a young boy attempting his very own leap of faith. Now just before we speak to the boy, it's worth keeping in mind that Mirage takes place 12 years before Valhalla. My name is Basim and I climbed up here without thinking it through. Do you think you could help me get down? When I was your age, I did all kinds of foolish things to impress my friends. I did not do it for them. I did it for the Hidden Ones. Ah, the Hidden Ones. Not everyone believes in them, but I do. They're the true protectors of the people. They were the ones who avenged my mother. Not the Khalifa or his men. The Hidden Ones did that. I see. And you thought this would get their attention, climbing up here. I heard they can die from great heights and not get hurt. But I cannot do something unless I see someone else do it first. Do you think you could do it if I showed you? Overthink it. You simply need to have faith. I am fine. Give me a second. Are you hurt? No, nothing broken. You are a fast learner. I told you, I can do anything if only someone shows me first. That is a valuable talent. Be sure to have a good teacher next time you try something risky like that. While it seems the young eagle definitely has some potential, it's not until his friends start speaking that we finally reveal his identity. Are, are you? Seek me out when your voice begins to break. Then we will talk. Wow, that was amazing. Come on, Haisem, before the Muezzin catches us. I'm coming! It looks like this is the origin story for Hypham, Basim's companion and leader of the Hidden Ones England branch in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's been a lot of moaning online about Assassin's Creed Mirage reusing animations from Valhalla. Considering all the previous games since Origins have been built on the same framework, 
It speaks volumes to some people's lack of understanding towards game development. If they thought the recycled cat animations were bad, wait until they realise an easter egg that's appeared in every single game since Origins is back once again. When walking through a wheat field, Basim will run his hand across the top of the stalks, recreating an iconic scene from Gladiator. Now, I don't know about you, but this kind of thing just makes this game utterly unplayable. Before we continue, I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you for watching and I hope you're enjoying. If you are, then a subscribe would of course be appreciated along with a comment and a like. They go a long way to helping my channel grow. If you're interested in Easter eggs, this channel is the place to be. I've been covering Starfield recently and I'll be covering Modern Warfare 3 soon. So there's lots of exciting things coming up that you won't want to miss. Okay, then that's enough of that. Let's get back to the Easter eggs. If you're a fan of the original Assassin's Creed, this may just be the best way to play Assassin's Creed Mirage. In the options menu, under the screen tab, there's an option to enable the iconic color filter. Doing so will transform the usually bright and colorful Mirage into this. This does a really great job of emulating the color palette from the first game. And if you want to go one step further, just head over to Ubisoft Connect and grab yourself the Altair costume. These two together are absolutely perfect for recreating some 2007 nostalgia. Being sandwiched in between Valhalla and Origins, Assassin's Creed Mirage has a lot of room to reference events from previous games and future ones. We see this when we meet young Hypham from Valhalla, and at the start of the game, we find a reference to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. When you arrive at Alamut Castle, you can find a note reading, I have enclosed with my letter a rare find, an ancient sketch of a hidden blade, the very first. You see its title, Xerxes' Bane. This was the weapon of Darius. I know not if our famed ancestor ever returned to his beloved Persia after his betrayal, but I thought I would return this etching of his blade to his native shores and to you. This note is referencing the Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC, Legacy of the First Blade, in which you meet and fight alongside Darius, the creator of the first hidden blade. Who are you? In the far south of Baghdad, Assassin's Creed Mirage is hiding a dark secret. The ruins here were at some point home to an astronomer, who left a series of notes detailing their discovery of a strange book. I stumbled upon ancient ruins and found a strange volume bound with leather and metal clasps. It seems to be a study of the sky, yet, as I read, a darkness descended. I made camp at the ruins. The view is good, but my nights are now filled with unease. Voices gibber on the wind. The earth itself mutters. I see awful words in my mind's eye. I fear I've opened the door to something terrible. Despite a growing dread, I read more from the dark tome. I fear it's become a compulsion. What I thought to be about the stars is much more and so much worse. They ruled once, they shall rule again. They wait only for the season. They walk unseen in the dark between the lights. They are coming. The voices, they scratch behind my eyes, tearing, twisting and breaking my thoughts. I can see nothing but their dark words. They walk unseen. Unseen. Look. save me. The final note is our first clue as to what's going on here. Yog Sothoth is a cosmic entity and core component of the Cthulhu mythos, 
as written by H.P. Lovecraft in 1928. Nearby that final note, the strange book that seemingly drove the astronomer to madness can be found. To access it, we're going to need to retrieve the oil jars on the ruins above, and use them to destroy the wall concealing the book. Now that the book is free, we can collect it for ourselves and take a look at it in our inventory, revealing that the front cover appears to depict some kind of squid, further connecting it to the Cthulhu mythos. All that's left to do is head over to the House of Wisdom and hand our book over. I found this strange book. Does it interest you? Oh, <laughs> do you know what that is? It has many names. I know it as Kitab al-Azim. The Book of the Dead. It is death to all who read it. If you believe the stories. I myself do not. But it will remain on my shelves where it can do no harm. Just in case. For our troubles, we'll be given the monstrous talisman that features the terrifying figure of an ancient eldritch being thought to be a primordial god. It's never said outright, but it's quite clear that what we see here is a direct depiction of Cthulhu, and yet another reference to the Cthulhu mythos and the works of H.P. Lovecraft. There's one final piece to this puzzle, and we can find it in Jar Jar Aya. The enigma found here once again clearly depicts Cthulhu, and leads us back to the ancient ruins. In the swamp behind the ruins, we can discover the treasure, another talisman, once again invoking an eldritch creature. What this means for the Assassin's Creed franchise is unknown, perhaps it's just a simple easter egg, or maybe there's something more out there, something ancient and horrifying. Well there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I'd really appreciate a like, comment and of course subscribe. Easter eggs are my bread and butter so if you like them, this is the perfect channel for you and I hope you stick around to see what's coming next. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.